This Julio Jones trade and best ball edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at WYNNBet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by Prop Swap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Roman. Roman is the straightforward way to take care of ED. Just go to getroman.com/sgp to get fifteen dollars off your first month of treatment. That's getroman.com/sgp. We're also brought to you by the SGPN app. Our app is now live in the App Store and Google Play Store. The SGPN app gives you easy access to all our picks, podcasts, and it's the exclusive place to enter all of our contests, including our $1,000 NBA Finals free roll. Just enter SGPN in the App Store or Google Play Store. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money. Kramer, what's happening, Kramer Dog? Sean, <coughs> we we are behind enemy lines. We deep, are deep in the heart of Texas on a mission. We are on a mission. Best ball in, in Texas, baby. <laughs> Let's go. We are. Uh, yes, we're staying. We're out here for a conference. Staying right next to. I mean. Literally, the the <laughs> hotel attached to the Dallas Cowboys training center, and it's just uh, man, it is. That is a disgusting. Act. The bedspread. I tweeted out a photo of uh, the stain that was on the bedspread. I looked closer. It was a Cowboys star, Ryan. They are they the stars are just everywhere, and not of course, uh, you know, including us podcast stars, but. Wow. Uh, there's the, we're right in Dallas Cowboys central. Check us out on the Twitter as we uh, Kramer posted a photo of the landfill. I K the uh, <laughs> some of my finest work. Thank you. The uh, Cowboys training center, big news. Well, we are going to be doing a, a live best ball draft, but of course, Julio Jones has been traded. We saw this coming for a while, but they finally pulled the trigger. Tennessee uh, traded a second round selection in the 2022 NFL draft and a fourth rounder in 2023 for Julio and a sixth rounder in 2023. So, uh, I mean, nice move by the Titans. You think uh, Corey Davis, you lose Corey Davis, you get Julio Jones. Feels like a pretty solid trade for them. Overall, and again, I I don't know what the Falcons are doing. I get Julio Jones wanted out, but you're in win now mode, which is a tough place to be when you have Matt Ryan. But still, you're in win now mode. I I think you got to figure out whatever you can do to keep Julio Jones as a member of the Atlanta Falcons. None of it makes sense, but we should. I should alert you, Sean. I think the draft is starting. We are starting the draft, and we are joined by Adam Pelletier, the Don of Bills Mafia. Well, we already got a couple picks out of the way. Um, let's see, Adam. Welcome to the show. Where are you picking in the first round? Uh, I'm picking one pick after you, Sean. Pick five. So Ooh. you're on the clock right I now. I see and I'm you getting right. ready to go. Yes, uh, already went pretty chalky here, as you'd expect. I'm sitting here staring at Derrick Henry, or do I do something crazy and go Travis Kelsey, or even crazier Tyree Kill? All right, I'm in the fifth spot. Hmm, let's see. I, I Kamara, Cook, and Christian McCaffrey have all gone. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go Travis Kelsey. Something about you're all over the Kelsey wagon. This yeah, something year. about uh, you know that Julio trade. I, I feel like I, I'm not dying to hop in on Derrick Henry. You're on the clock, uh, Adam. Pick number five. What are you doing here? Uh, listen, I'm just looking at. Numbers from last year. I got to go Devonte Adams here. PPR lead, Ooh. ton of upside. The man just is a target monster. Projected for 170 targets this year using our SGPN projections. <laughs> That's right. I got the inside edge on this. The yeah. only one with access at the moment. <laughs> we do have projections. Uh, Adam is going to be taking over as fantasy football editor, Ryan, because we have so much fantasy football content coming at you. Saquon Barkley now at the seventh pick. Derrick Henry gone. Saquon Barkley, of course, coming back from not only a torn ACL, also a torn meniscus. 
Sounds like he's not going to be getting a full workload early in the season. Ryan, you don't have to draft him. You do have to draft someone. You're in the eighth spot. What do you do here? I'm just going to go value because I'm mm. getting one of the my, one of my top tier running backs. I think the volume's there. Jonathan Taylor. I, I considered Tyree Killer Diggs at this spot, but also Sean, I see you already have Kelsey, meaning that I'm probably not going to be get my pr- my premium grade A beef. Kansas oh. City stack and having Adam here, I didn't want to go digs and put myself in a weird situation where I might have to <laughs> overdraft Josh Allen. And I just wanted to I've been drafting the receiver at this spot a lot. I think Jonathan I want more shares of Jonathan Taylor. I find myself avoiding him. I was happy to see Saquon get picked because I didn't want to have to deal with that mess and and, and have the conversation again with you. About how <laughs> his value is sinking all the way to the back end of the first half, the first round. Well, and and Adam, coming back to your Devonte Adams pick, are you That's worried? Bold. I like it. It, it. Of course, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't play, what do you think the value of Devonte Adams is? I mean, it's definitely going to take a hit, but he's going to have those big boom games still. Jordan Love is going to lock onto him. He's going to throw to him. You know, a guy like Devonte Adams, who's just always open, is a young quarterback's best friend. So even if Aaron Rodgers leaves Green Bay, which is looking less and less like that'll happen every day. He's still going to have a ton of value out there in with Jordan. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think again, if if Rodgers goes, which I still think he has no leverage, I think they're just uh, they're just going to tell him, "Hey, dude, if you don't want to play in the NFL, just start mailing those checks back." And that's when reality <laughs> hits. Yeah, and I I think he's going to end up playing. Ryan, you are now on the clock. Of course, uh, real quick, Zeke is gone. Tyree Kill, Stefan Diggs, Austin Eckler closing out round one. He is now a round one running back. D Hop, Cam Akers, Calvin Ridley, all the way to the top of the second with the official news that Julio Jones, uh, they have moved on. What are you doing here, Craig? Uh, when again, I'm just going to, I don't get the Harris bump all the way up here. Uh, I'm going to take Aaron Jones. It's mm. a proven thing. I mean, the, the other guys we can talk about, I guess I would, it was looking at was maybe Joe Mixon. Uh, he's another, you know, fun pick in June talking about what he could be, uh, which is always what we're talking about with Mixon. So yeah, I, I, I guess for me, the only decision I really was making was, was um, do I, do I take an AJ Brown uh, or one of the pass catchers? No, I still, I still like the, uh, the tier two running back I'm looking at. So now I got to go receiver. I'm, I'm, I put myself in a you situation hyper fragile Ryan Nick Chubb Aaron Jones uh, was uh, Kramer's pick I missed the Nick Chubb one Darren Waller goes uh, Joe Mixon off the board I Damn am it. what's up Adam's up uh, that was I I had Mixon locked in yeah. for my next pick so yeah I forgot but now on the, on the way back what. you're one in front of me what are you doing here yeah. you already have one receiver. Well, I got one receiver and right now just looking at the board the running backs there are just they're going to be there coming back around. So I'm going to go get AJ Brown right now. Who's going to see Ooh. might even see a bump in fantasy value with the arrival of Julio Jones and defenses, not being able to key in on him. You know, he's slated for 130 targets this year and Julio coming in. Doesn't, doesn't have to touch any of those targets. There's 165 targets available for Julio Jones to take. And that's without even touching anything AJ Brown's doing. So AJ Brown's still in for a big year. Yeah, I mean it's Reynolds. I mean he was already being underdrafted, and now he's lost whatever volume he was going to step into. And I, I kind of like the angle of being more bullish on AJ Brown with someone to help him on the other side. Well, I did it. I pulled the trigger on the Patrick Mahomes stack late in round two, just wow, so I wouldn't early. miss on him. Kyle Pitts goes. You want to talk about early? Kyle Pitts? Are you kidding me? George Kittle goes right after him. I mean, drafting Kyle Pitts against uh, ahead of George Kittle. This is insane, right? And Sean, you're up third round. Uh, is this the customary Miles Sanders pick? Or now, are Najee we- Harris uh, has gone. DK Metcalf, Antonio Gibson, Justin Jefferson. I would have liked to snag a receiver. I don't have a receiver yet. Eight seconds. Do I go Michael Thomas, uh, Keenan Allen? Keenan Allen, baby. Ah, uh, hmm. You know, I I think Michael Thomas. And did I get him in time? Oh no! Did you auto draft? <laughs> Shit! It auto drafted me. Oh no! Did I get? Uh, what what the hell happened here, Ryan? No, know. you got Clyde Edwards. This is great. Then. Oh my god! This is great. Sean's <laughs> all in on the Kansas City offense. Oh, I did shit. I try. I try. I got cute. I was talking too much. Clyde yeah, Edwards, Hilaire, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Well, if you if you had to be stuck with one team, may as well be the Kansas like it, City Sean. Chiefs. Kramer, trying to get a read in. 
because we got to talk. We get to talk about WinBet, the presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast. You want to bet on the Kansas City Chiefs win total? You should. I'm all in on the Kansas City Chiefs. Why don't you go all in on the Kansas City Chiefs or whatever team you're looking to lay down? Go to winbet.com, W Y N N bet.com. They got a $500 risk free bet. That's right, 500 bucks risk free. W Y N N bet.com, B E T. If you want to win big, you got to go to W Y N N. They got it all, man. What a nap. Very easy to use. Intuitive, sweet, sweet deposit bonus with that risk free bet. And of course, the uh, parlay bonuses. Spin that parlay wheel because you are a hashtag digits only. Don't forget, just go to winbet.com. That's all you got to remember from this podcast. Go to winbet.com. Let's go, baby. Okay, Kramer. Where are we at? Miles Sanders is off the board and said I have Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Dobbins is off the board. Amari Cooper, Josh Jacobs, Josh Allen's gone. Chris Carson, Julio Jones, uh, Mike Evans, DJ Moore, that's, Robert uh, Woods. That's Keenan Allen, not Josh Allen. Yeah, I was Allen gonna say Josh Allen's there. still there, baby. Keenan Allen. Allen. He goes he goes to Dallas and his mind just goes to hell. Yeah, I know. Can't remember anything. Oh, I'm looking, I'm looking up. at available players. Re- <laughs> Jesus, all right. <laughs> So Dobbins is gone. Sanders is gone. Terry McLaurin, David Montgomery, <laughs> Allen Robinson, the second. Uh, that's who I took. That's who, by the that's Dallas who I sickness. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I looped back around with the, uh, my wide receiver one, Allen Robinson. Uh, look, I, I had to snag someone. I looked at Terry McLaurin. I, I, again, we were discussing this with the cab driver on the way over to the hotel. <laughs> yeah, we were a uh, lot. People have a lot of confidence in journeyman. I'm on team Ryan as well, but journeyman Ryan Fitzpatrick Patrick. So uh, I, I erred on the side of not taking McLaurin, although I think he could have more big, bigger games. I just like what I think Allen Robinson's going to bring week in and week out Sean. I'm almost back on the clock yeah. and, and I am very tickled to see Julio Jones there. I'm very intrigued by what what this means for him on a team with no defense to be seen. I don't think they're going to have a defense. They haven't done much to upgrade their defense. That's for sure. But I also, oh man, see, this is where if I didn't hate the Cowboys, I certainly would be looking at Amari Cooper. But just for the sake of talking about it a little bit, I'm gonna try to injure him at the gym. I'm taking, I'm taking Julio Jones here, because what do you like better than a guy with a new outlook? A guy with a obviously he thought Matt Ryan fucking sucked, and obviously (laughs) he thinks hashtag Team Ryan. Is this not a lot for the Atlanta Falcons under Julio Jones is asking out of Atlanta? So uh, Julio. I overdrafted him, but he's not making it back to me. And and I like uh, I like having him on a roster now. I want to have some shares of him now because in the fourth round it's gone too far. So Amari Cooper is now gone. Josh Allen's gone. C.D. Lamb's gone. Chris Carson, Kyler Murray, and uh, can can I ask Adam what he sure. thinks of Julio Jones? Listen, like I said, especially in best ball, you're looking at a guy who might get get off to kind of a slow start, but in the second half of the year he's going to be someone who's going to come on in a big way. Love the pick there. Tons of available targets. Ryan Tannehill knows how to get the ball to his playmakers in space. Julio look for him to have a big year. It's going to be funny when Tannehill is the huge step up from, from uh, <laughs> oh, Matt no. Ryan. Trust me. Tannehill is you're on the clock coming Adam. up on the clock. I know. And I got, I got a bunch of running backs here. Hap, would have been happy to take Jacobs Davis ETN or Gaskin or hunt in that stretch for that matter. Huh. Um, big stack of backs there that I love to see. And after going heavy with the wide receivers early, I got to blitz some running backs here. I'm, make sure I've got some talent. Yeah, I'm I'm instituting a zero uh, W re- receiver um, <laughs> formula here. I got to I got to get a receiver. Give me Chris Godwin. Love the upside on Godwin, and uh, you know that that Bucks offense still seems to be firing. Old man, old man Brady still slinging the slinging the rock. I. Godwin seems to be slipping for for an untold. I don't, I don't quite yeah, understand. And Mike Evans, he, he tweaked his knee really weird. I, I think of any uh, and Antonio Brown, that guy's a powder keg. I think of any of the receivers. Godwin seems to be the most reliable. I'm back on the clock oh, Jesus again. Christ. I I feel like I got to go receiver again. Adam Thielen's right there. Tyler Lockett, Deontay Johnson. 
I feel like I have so many shares of Deontay Johnson. Am I crazy to take him again no, here? You like him, and, and again, yes, I, yes, not, you are. I, I'm crazy. Give Sean, me Deontay Johnson. It was a sign. God. We were in the cab. I'm trying to save you from yourself. <laughs> trying to save you. Now, from Adam, yourself. you're up next. Who who do you who are you grabbing? I'm going back to that Bengals offense. Jamar oh. Chase got that big upside, that chemistry with Smoke and Joe Burrow. Love to see it. Stogie Love to Joe. See him there I, I like how Adam's Stogie willing to Joe. Sta- stand on stand on his uh, his table and pound the pound the table for a rookie. R- a rookie receiver. Listen, last year I was all in on the T Higgins train. Early in the preseason, I was like, you know, T Higgins, he's going to end up being the best receiver in this class. Put my money where my mouth was. Put several bets down on it. Just missed out on him being a top twenty-four wide receiver. He was wide receiver twenty-eight last year without Joe Burrow for half the season. Full season of Joe Burrow. Full year as a pro. Look for this offense to just be something special. And there's plenty of targets again. Jamar Chase stepping in. AJ Green couldn't catch a cold in Antarctica last year. Jamar <laughs> Chase has hands. He's going to do great. And uh, I'm on the clock, and I'm happy to take Cooper cup here. And, and uh, you know, we should probably discuss this, but the Rams receivers, aren't they all just getting a massive upgrade with Matt Stafford walking? I know I'm higher on than most on sta- than sta- uh, on Stafford than most Sean, but is that not we're what getting, isn't two, two at well going to steal all their fifth, targets fifth round. I've I, going Taylor and then Aaron Jones. I've been able to come back with uh, a Rob Julio Jones and Cooper cup, which you know, I'm liking my team, Sean. I, I don't know about well, you. After Cooper Cup goes, uh, ETN goes, Kareem Hunt, who I always like to get a little, uh, little uh, shares of Kareem Hunt. Tyler Lockett goes. Kramer, you're coming up in uh, your five picks. What are you looking to do to round out the squad? More receivers. Uh, I think you can't take it. We got you got to start three. It's PPR. This is best ball, right? We're trying to win weeks, Sean. As you know, yes, you're not playing this to win a hundred bucks. You're playing this to win the million, so we're gonna need to get get continue to get receivers that I feel like I can stack because I want to end up. I, I'm not going premium, so I'm gonna want to end up with three nice stacks here. Now, Adam, you're sitting on. You got DeAndre Swift, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, AJ Brown, Jamar Chase. Feel like you have a well balanced team. What's what's next on your list here? Uh, next on my list, I'm looking to add another running back or receiver, depending on how this falls to me. Um, if the backs and receivers that I really like fall off the board though, I got quarterbacks. I got two that I'm targeting and I'm I'll go get those guys early just to complete my stacks. Um, obviously targeting Burrow and Tannehill. I think they're both going to be in pass heavy, pass friendly offenses. Um, and talking about those Rams receivers, um, both woods and cup right now slated for 120 plus target seasons. So both could be, you know, 80, 90 catch guys with a thousand yards and a bunch of touchdowns with Matt Stafford in the fold. This is a year where they're actually going to have more of just the top two targets versus three. Um, so it pans out well for woods and cup at the top end there. Those are two guys who are going to finish as hot as going to finish in the wide receiver two category pretty firmly. Kramer, you're back on the clock. What do you, what do you got here? I mean, it's Round all, six. it's all about, I mean, I just, Round five. I just gave away the, the trick, but uh, I, I want to grab more receivers. I feel like I can stack later with uh with lower equity, Robbie Anderson, a guy we've both liked. I love how low he's ranked in DraftKings specifically. Yeah. The fact that Odell Beckham went one pick before him, uh, he's going to have, so, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious to hear what the projection is on him, Adam, because it just feels like that team's going to play no defense. And you know, I like DJ Moore as the next guy, but DJ Moore went what two plus rounds ago, maybe three rounds ago. Yeah, yeah. looking uh, looking at Anderson. Anderson's actually slated 128 targets. Boom. So you know, three guys getting 100 targets there in Carolina. Moore, Anderson, and McCaffrey. Anderson, we might have him a little low on yardage. We're doing some tweaking. You're I on think the clock, he's Adam. Higher than the, oh, I know I'm on the clock, uh. and I'm going with my guy DJ Chark. Oh. Um, So here's the thing, guys, everybody's down on DJ Chark right now. And they're looking at that. They're looking at him and saying, oh, he didn't have a great year last year, but everyone's forgetting. He only played in 13 games last year and still managed 93 targets, 700 yards and five touchdowns with a crap show at quarterback throwing eight seconds. Just an absolute, just an absolute disaster. And this is the same guy who two years ago, 120 targets in 15 games, He's going to be stepping up there in a big way. They're going to, he has help all over the place. And Trevor Lawrence looks like 
the real deal in NFL quarterback. And that should help DJ Chark establish himself as a high end wide receiver two, low end wide receiver one. And Urban Meyer coaching him up the only way Urban Meyer knows how, telling him he looked like a big guy smith playing small. So <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. I, I thought you were going to meant bribing him with free tattoos <laughs> at the parlor. All right, Sean, who'd Ohio you take? state style, right? Hell yeah. I took uh Devante Smith with the 69th oh, pick. <laughs> nice. Oh, Sean's all in after that. Leonard Fournette, Russell Wilson, Brandon, Ayuk, Tom Brady, Raheem Moster, Juju Smith Schuster. I got to get me some, uh, I got to get, I'm, I got to get me some running back. So I'm, I'm all over the map. Yeah, all I have is Clyde Edwards Hilaire and then a bunch of uh, pass catchers, which I'm not opposed to. Jalen Hurts is there though, and he's not gonna make it back to you. No, I, I got <laughs> I got Patrick Mahomes, but I'm also gonna go the uh, rookie running back. Ooh. Javante Williams. A- again, this is I- I'm buying into the hype, but give me Javante Williams, has a chance to maybe beat out Melvin Gordon. So this is a this is a you know low floor, high ceiling play run. I- it's it, we're in the eighth with seventh round. It's he could be the starter and he look, he could be, you know, he's one of the guys uh, we he, were dra- We've been drafting him all spring and it's, he has his, his draft you, location. Hasn't gone up now, Adam, you just drafted uh, a, a rookie running back right after me. You I took drafted Trey the Sermon. correct rookie running back <laughs> in that situation. Oh, wow. Trey Sermon in a much better offense with less guys in front with less talent in front of him to compete with. He's got, you know, Javante Williams has Melvin Gordon sitting in front of him. Melvin Gordon is a better pass catcher and is more established. And he's in the last year of his contract. So Denver's going to have no qualms about just feeding him, feeding him, feeding him. And the entire time uh, since Vic Fangio showed up, Denver's been about a, you know, 60, 40, 65, 35 split. And that's going to favor Melvin Gordon this year. Debo Samuel goes after Adam Cortland Sutton goes now Kramer. You're back on the clock. What are you doing here? And, and I feel like I've been buying this guy all uh, off season and I want a piece of the Cincy offense and it's Tyler Boyd. I, I'm perhaps he's the odd man out, but he's been a professional wide receiver. I see no reason for that to change. And much like Carolina, I think there's plenty of targets to go around. Oh, Ryan. Oh man. Roman. Oh, perfect time to talk about Roman. You know, it's all about uh, people coming up short. The Dallas Cowboys, Ryan, they've come up short year after year after year, which it's funny. It's funny to make fun of the Cowboys for not winning playoff games, coming up short, not, not getting to the big game, not taking the trophy home, AKA the Lombardi, AKA the Super Bowl. But you're coming up short in the bedroom. No need to laugh. No need to no need to feel bad. Honestly, if you're coming up short in the bedroom, easy to get that taken care of. Unlike the Cowboys problem, which has plagued them for decades. If you got a problem in the bedroom coming up short, get Roman is here to save the day. And I'm saying get Roman, but really it's Roman, but you got to go to get Roman.com slash S G P get Roman.com slash S G P free online visit. Again, you can take care of your ED without leaving home. How easy is that? Yeah, we've been on Zoom meetings for the past what year and a half. Why not? Why not take care of your Zoom meeting? Uh, you know, take care of your ED on a Zoom meeting, knock it out, and uh, again, online visit with the doctor. Very easy. If uh, medication right for you, fifteen dollars off your first month. Get Roman.com/sgp. Get started now and save fifteen dollars off your first month. Kramer, where are we at? You're I mean, back on the clock. These DraftKings drafts are just insanely. Uh, After hot. you drafted, Dallas Goddard goes. Jalen Hurts goes. Damn it, J- uh, Jarvis Landry, James Robinson, Jerry Judy, Aaron Rodgers, Logan Thomas, Jalen Waddle, and now you are back on the clock, sir. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm going to draft Brandon Cooks for one hmm. reason. Deshaun Watson is going to be one of my quarterbacks, <laughs> maybe. But if not, I mean, again, lots of targets. This team should be hot trash. He produces everywhere with every quarterback, and we're in the eighth round. I've now taken six straight wide receivers, Sean, after going running back, running back to start. Yeah, you load up on running backs early. Don't need to do them late. Uh, Adam, you are now on the clock. What are you doing here? I'm going and taking the better Denver running back, Sean, since you wanted to leave Melvin (laughs) Gordon for me. So I'm going to go ahead, scoop him up, especially in PPR. He's really underrated. He had one of his worst yards per catch last year, um, career low. And I think he bounces back from that as either drew lock takes a step forward or Teddy Bridgewater comes in and is a professional NFL quarterback 
who can get him the ball in space. You know, I'm kind of playing this angle and not to go against your DeAndre Swift thing, but I think I'm I'm going to uh, I'm playing this angle of teams bringing in these running backs uh, and they're going to use them. So I I think the fact that James Conner was brought into the Cardinals offense, I think they might end up using them and I, and I'm just not sold on the idea of Chase Edmonds eating up all the targets, all the carries. I think there's going to be a real role for James Conner. So I took him late here and you, the same could be applied for uh Kenyon Drake. I think out in uh, Las Vegas as well. No, it could be check yeah, down Drake, right? Yeah, definitely could be. And that's, you know, that's why I've been running back heavy here with sermon and Gordon guys who I know are probably going to stay involved and have those big weeks. So needed to get the backups in line just in case check down. Drake is a thing. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to do it. I need it. I want to move on from the running back position. I'm going to take Kenyon Drake, mm. probably a little early, but I got Kenyon Drake, James Connor, Javante Williams, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. I hate, I hate that the fucking thing auto drafted Clyde Edwards Hilaire, but I'm learning to love it. Adam, you're picking right after me. What are you doing here? Adam. Did Adam accidentally oh, hit mute? Mute it. There we go. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I got robbed in my Tannehill stack, so I gotta go with my Burrow stack, make sure I could leave the draft with at least one of those stacks coming out. And it's it seems like we're getting to that point uh in the draft, Sean. And and I'm gonna be honest, I, I haven't ended up with this yet. I have Cooper Cup. I have been Matt Stafford has been in my queue for now a, a, a full like round and a half. There are some receivers I like, but I do want to end up with this stack. I am going to be uh, probably higher on the <laughs> the Rams situation than I should be because I love Matt Stafford, and this locks up a pretty nice stack. Sean, we we agree this should be a good offense. Yeah, and uh, so th- there's stack number one. A couple Let's other guys it. off the board: Will Fuller, Irv Smith Jr., T- Ryan Tannehill, of course, snaked away from Adam. Michael Pittman Jr., Russell Gage, who's getting that bump. Uh, Michael Carter, rookie for the Jets. Tony Pollard for the Cowboys. Matt Stafford, of course, taken by Kramer. Mike Williams off the board. Tyler Higby goes. Mm, Tyler Higby, I think, I think he could be a sneaky, uh, pretty good tight end in that offense. And the fact that Gerald Everett isn't there, because you remember for that first half of the season, especially they, uh, you know, Higby and Everett were trading pretty good games, and it was like, who do you put in your DFS yeah. lineup? Who do you start? I think the fact that it's just going to be Higby, and uh, you know he's he's very familiar with that Rams offense. He he could have a breakout year. Tunyon goes, who again that's kind of tied to um, Aaron Rodgers, and and assuming Rodgers plays, which I'm still leaning to that. I, I think this is kind of low for Tunyon, honestly. Me Cole Hardman goes. Of course, I don't need any more Chiefs. I need some more running backs, receivers. I got to get a second <laughs> quarterback at some point. What do you think about Curtis Samuel Kramer? I mean, look, I, I picked before you and there there's a strong chance that I'm going to be taking Curtis Samuel. Cause he just shouldn't be available at this yeah. point. Uh, and, and just like that, no, well, there maybe, he goes. maybe no, people no. Are, are listening, but yeah, I mean, if it, he wasn't going to make it P- after pick 100 for Curtis Samuel is egregious. He's going to be just an absolute beast in that Washington offense. And I consider taking him at the Stafford pick. Uh, shocked to see him go this far. It does seem like there's going to be plenty of opportunity. Uh, maybe, maybe the defensive caliber scares people away. There's going to be a little le- less opportunity. And, and if if Fitzmagic doesn't have that vertical passing game that everyone seems like he's just going to slot in with, uh, then yeah, they get, get super interesting. And there are still, as I look at these receivers, Sean, there are still plenty. I I feel like is it crazy to want to end up with like eleven receivers? Is that too many? Because I, there's still guys I love. There's still guys I feel like are, are high upside. No, that's that's definitely the right move, Kramer. Because especially when you look at how guys finish in each week, yeah. the top 20, 30 receivers each week, ten of those guys are just who got lucky and who caught one, who caught like four balls for a hundred yards and a touchdown. And those guys just flash in the pan. So you just want a lot of those late round bites. So I think you really actually want to make sure you wrap up everything except for wide receiver. And then at the end of the draft, just dart throw, dart throw, dart throw, you know dart throw. I, I got to reach on this guy because I'm. I think the media is starting to catch up to it. He's going to be used heavily in the offense, and I didn't get Ryan Tannehill, so I'm going to stack Julio with Ferkser. Ooh, the old uh, horizontal, Ooh, a stack. little horizontal tight end oh. Julio stack. 
Um, is that a ooh good or a ooh way too early? Ooh, ooh bad. I think his value just got killed with the arrival of Julio. Oh. We had him slotted for about ninety targets, and that was that one sixty five number that I quoted earlier involves eating mm. into that heavily because I can't imagine they want to target an unproven tight end over Julio Jones to that level. Oh, I I don't think he's. I think there's enough for both of them. Uh, and honestly, like I, I I'm eating all the beat reporters shit when it comes to <laughs> the, fr- I was already kind of on him, And then I started, oh, wait, someone get I was that eating sound, shit. Yeah. Sound uh, and uh, Adam is on the clock <laughs> and I'm going, just going into that Jacksonville offense. Uh, Vizca Chanel's one of those guys yeah. who's just going to get the ball in his hands at every turn, every opportunity. He got to be in it. Got, got to want to have that guy in your roster. He was in my queue. Adam considered him while, while I make my pick, talk to us about Gabe Davis and his uh, fantasy value as the bills mafia Don. Uh, So Gabe Davis, it's going to be real interesting to see this year. Um, I really think the bills are banking heavily on him taking over that second outside role. I think Emmanuel Sanders is there Mm -hmm. to just be a safe high floor kind of guy. Um, I think Gabe Davis is, cons- I have con- we have him conservatively down for 75 targets this year. I think that number is going to go higher. I wouldn't be surprised if he's around 80, 90, but the thing you love with him is he's one of the big, he's one of the biggest receivers the bills have, and he has the surest hands much better than their tight ends. So I wouldn't be surprised if when they get down towards the red zone, you see him running some tight end type routes out of the slot and he picks up some good touchdown numbers. So he could have some of those big weeks that we talked about where he goes for 10 catches for a hundred and some odd yep, 10 or, you know, a few catches for a touchdown or two. Yeah. So I, uh, I went Devonte Parker just cause he's a PPR machine. Kirk cousins off the board, Henry rugs off the board, Trevor Lawrence off the board. So you missed out on that stack. Unfortunately, Adam, Yeah, I did Zach Moss, Matt Ryan, Corey Davis. I'm on the clock. Uh, I'm going to keep it. Uh, where my homers at? Give me Jalen Rager. They're going out of their way to figure out ways to get them involved in the offense. Some jet sweeps, some bubble screens. I'm still worried about their passing defense, so I, I I'm fine with the two Eagles receivers. Adam, now you're on the clock. What are you doing here? Uh, you know, again, I'm in that range where I'm looking for receivers. There aren't any running backs that I'm necessarily crazy about. Um, so I'm going to reach a little bit here for Darnell Mooney, but I really oh. think he's going to be. Yeah, I think he's going to be big this year, and I'm hoping. I'm hoping, and I'm sure somebody's listening. I want to complete the stack with Justin Fields coming back around. So I hope I don't get sniped on this one. Well, I, if got I do, I, got I, some I do have things. Allen Robinson and I'm, I'm looking at my yeah. problem with having too much of a, a share of Justin Fields this year is if he is good, I'm really going to be sad because then I'm going to have to listen to people talk about how the giants traded down and God forbid Danny dimes. Isn't the God that I think he's going oh, to be this year. Kramer, you're going to have to listen to that. Cause Justin Fields <laughs> is going to be a top 10 fantasy quarterback. Uh, I know year. he's definitely, I think Absolutely. he's going to be. And I, I already had him in my queue before you, you brought him up and before your Mooney pick, because I, I I'm high on Justin Fields. And I think the Justin Fields, Cole Komet stack, which, you know, Cole Komet, you can get super late. Uh, the rushing Sean, upside. I'm going to need you to Fields. stop looking at my queue and my draft board here. <laughs> All right, guys. I have the Justin Fields full commit. I won't be a dick. As well. Yeah, I won't be a dick. I have a ton of Justin Fields exposure already uh, this off season. I won't take him here. Instead, I'm going to take a running back uh, from a team that wants to run the ball a fuck ton and just said they're going to run a committee out there with the longer season. Gus Edwards, the coaching Ooh. staff clearly loves that guy. He's my third running back. I, I I realized I needed someone else that I knew had a clear role. Like it, like for Gus Edwards is going to score touchdowns whether or not anyone gets hurt. So uh, again, seems like a good value this late in the draft. I know he's not going to catch a ton of passes, but little update: Trey Lance, AJ Dillon, Gus Edwards, T. Y. Hilton. Uh, Jamal Williams, Naheem Hines, and Mike Gusecki all off the board. The Naheem Hines, Mike Gusecki. I feel like those two guys are my guys. Um, unfortunately, not going to have them going on. I got a, I got again. I got a, uh, I got a pretty interesting team going here. Patrick Mahomes, Edwards, Hilaire, Javante Williams, Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson, uh, Devonta Smith, Travis Kelsey, James Conyer, Kenyon Drake, Devonte Parker. I, I have a Devante and a Devonta, Jalen Rager, all over the place, Sean. all over the place. Need a second quarterback at some point, 
Carson Wentz is gone. Cole Beasley gone. Uh, Carson Wentz, of course, formerly my guy, no longer my guy. Oh my Kramer, God. you're you're you, coming up. I didn't realize I picked twice before you guys. I can't let Justin Fields go a second time. <laughs> oh, you can't. You I can't. Have you to can't take let him, him go. If he's no there, hard feelings on this. One. Well, I ha- and I also have Allen Robinson, which which gives me a pretty potent, like a high. A, you know, they the, the the analytics community would say it's a high floor. Right, Daniel center. Jones is available. I don't have a Daniel Jones stack. That's the but problem. He's, there. he's, he's the vanilla. Vic, he's your guy right? though. He's, he's, he's like a top speed of 85 miles per hour. I should be what I'm, <laughs> what I'm not telling you is that when we're not live on the air, Sean, I am just drafting I've, all I've the shares looked over your shoulder. And I've seen your share portfolio of Daniel Jones. It's, and not, it, it's not a lot. You can say all you want. Your share percentage says I, it all right. You're right. I need to put my money where my mouth is. I'm just, you know, my heart's in it. All right. And that's bigger than any of these best ball teams, Sean, <laughs> because my heart's all season. These best ball teams set it and forget it. All right. Adam's on the clock. So let's see. You took uh Justin Fields, uh, JD McKissick off the board, a uh, Marvin Jones, Jr. Two is off the board. Latavius Murray as well. Adam, you're on the clock. What are you doing? I got to have a quarterback. I feel good about. So I got to go with my guy Fitz magic. I Ooh. just feel like there's something to be had. It's kind of, it's going to be kind of his last ride. This feels like the, this feels like it's going to be a good Fitzpatrick year where he strings it together and finally makes the playoffs and finishes as a top 15 quarterback. You know, I don't love this guy and I love making fun of him, but <laughs> as my second quarterback, <laughs> To Patrick Mahomes, I'm gonna go uh, Baker Mayfield. Oh. Why not? Need a, I, need a second quarterback. What I, lo- I like this because you're setting up a late round stack. Yeah, there's a couple options. I mean, there and there's some dart throws like even Peoples Jones, um, you know Harrison Bryant. Uh, there's there's a couple tight or Harrison Bryant is the tight end, but there's there's some interesting deep stacks for the Browns. Um, worth keeping an eye on, honestly. Yeah, I mean the Peoples Jones one is interesting, right? Like, because he has the, I mean, we saw it, right? He had some nice games, touchdown upside. He's a big dude. I'm on the clock again. Jesus. Oh man, what do I do here? Fifteen seconds. I mean, you just got to grab pass catchers. It, it you can't have enough pass catchers. When in doubt. Well, and I I keep drafting I this guy. I've talked him up so much. Give me Chubba Hubbard. Oh yeah, that's I, I mean the too. the injury issues with Christian McCaffrey are real. It's uh, time to grab the, the guys. The Panthers that, have been high on, and he's just like one of my flag plant guys, Ryan. Well, there's just also this is the time, and Adams on the clock, but this is the time where you can grab guys who potentially could have the the entire role, like Madison just went right, couldn't t- could have the entire mm-hmm. role. Uh, the guy Adam took, and we'll let him talk about him. Singletary, no reason why he couldn't be carrying the the entire load, right? Yeah. And I think that Bill's offense is going to be a pretty straight 50, 50 split. So he'll have his games. And so with best ball, just looking to hit on those upside games, you know, he's the kind of guy who can break, who can avoid some tackles and hit a 70 yard run. So nice guy to pick up late here. And all of a sudden uh, I've now picked up my fourth running back. So to go with Jonathan Taylor and Aaron Jones, Sean, I've uh, late taken Gus Edwards. And then uh, two rounds later, Henderson, Daryl Henderson, who another guy, he could end up with the full job, right? Like cam Akers, a lot of people putting a lot of stock in that basket, but if he goes down Henderson, most likely the guy, maybe the guy, if nothing else, Sean McVay can score points from the running back position. I, I feel like our draft as a whole has avoided the tight end position. Pretty, pretty good. Cause I'm looking at Hunter Henry still available. Adam Troutman. I need another Hoop, one. Austin Hooper, Gerald I, Everett. I just have Ferkser. Cole Komet and Zach Ertz and Zach Ertz. I I know I'm on this island here. Is he going to Buffalo or what? He, when he becomes a Buffalo Bill, he's going to be a uh, a steal. Like whoever's whoever's taking Zach Ertz is going to play him. And you want to talk about guys who could have the entire role? Uh, Zach Ertz could go to a number of teams that he's being considered traded to, or that will that will sign him when he gets cut. And he could be the tight end one in a, in like a decent offense. So it's crazy how far he's fallen. I think people are just scared to take him because they see him probably right now behind Goddard on the depth chart, but he's not going to be an Eagle this year. Where are you at with uh, wanting Zach Ertz and Buffalo Adam? If we can get him for not a lot, I'm really happy with that move. He seems like a Buffalo kind of guy, <laughs> you know, show up, do your job. Um, so definitely would love to see him land in Buffalo if the price is right, but it all comes down to 
can we get them for the right price? Because if they got to give up a lot of capital for them, it's not worth it with the Bills having to spend a lot on contracts coming up. I just I don't want to see him in Buffalo if they got to give up draft picks. Yeah, too I many mean, draft picks I, because I, those are just going to be valuable moving forward. I, I think you can get him. I mean, I think if they offered the Eagles a fifth, I think they would trade him. Zach Wilson goes. Austin Hooper, Hunter Henry, who I just <laughs> mentioned. These guys: Philip Lindsay, Brashad Perryman, Elijah Moore, Rob Gronkowski, Daryl Henderson Jr. Of course, Kramer snagged. Uh, John who Smith's off the board. Oh, uh, see, I, I need it. I feel like you're I back de- on the clock, right? I feel like I definitely need a tight end. Um, Adam, what's your take on Adam, Adam Troutman in, in like five seconds? <laughs> I mean, it, I think Jameis Winston's going to throw it a ton down there in New yeah. Orleans. Somebody's got to catch the ball. Yeah. Brian, why it would you take hurt. him over Cole Komet though? Because uh, maybe I'm trying to set up a third stack. Okay. Because he's being courteous to his guest and letting me take <laughs> Cole Komet. In three picks, I, I have he, Cole Komet's another guy. He's way too far down in the rankings right now, so I have him whenever I want him, which means I have him a lot. And he's one of the yeah, guys that I have to shed some exposure, I guess. And this is just a massive frustration of mine. People are people are seeing ADP, and that's the only thing we're sorting by, and that just leads to trouble because you're getting guys who are just wildly over or undervalued, like Cole Komet wildly undervalued right now. Um, he had a solid year last year. He was heavily involved. It seems like he's going to be the guy in Chicago, which means that last year when that offense targeted the tight end uh, about 110 times, that's going to be a hunt, you know, probably 80, 90 targets going to Cole Komet from a better passer in Justin Fields this year. And just from a schematical standpoint, they targeted the end zone as a shitload. And, and, and yeah. like Jimmy Graham was a freak with his red zone targets. Uh, so yeah, I, I think Cole Komet definitely has a more defined role. The Adam Troutman pick is intriguing just from like, I, I have no idea what that offense is going to look like and no one's being drafted out of it out of outside of Kamara ever, and Thomas, you could say is falling. No one else is being drafted in the first 10 rounds. So it's like someone's going to score points down there. I have a feeling Sean Payne's not going to fuck it up. So I took Zach Ertz right after Cole Komet. Other oh, players did. that have gone: Paris Campbell, Blake Jarwin, Eric Ebron, Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Tony sighting. There we go. James White, uh, Terrence Marshall Jr., Derek Carr has been drafted. Now I'm back on the clock. Hmm. Couple. Uh, what do I do here? I don't. I don't need another tight end. Daniel Jones is right there. Of course, <laughs> not going to draft him. Staring at those those beautiful eyes of Daniel Jones. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of guys with some higher ADP, but I'm going to go uh, stack here. I'm going to go Rashard Higgins, uh, Cleveland Browns. See if I can. Uh, he had some moments last year and and I'm optimistic that Odell Beckham gets injured again or gets traded or something bad happens. And, and Jarvis Landry uh, getting up there a little bit, dealing with the hip injury, Adam, you're right after me. What are you doing? Uh, I got to get another quarterback on this roster. I got Joe Burrow, who's probably going to be solid most weeks, but I need some upside. So I think put, putting Ryan Fitzpatrick and Jameis Winston behind him, I know I, it's going to be tough for me to be able to stack either of those guys, but just the high upside play on the back end is just something I can't really pass up. Well, and you should look, uh, I, I keep, and I've drafted this guy a couple of times when I've had Jamison Winston is uh, Marcus Calloway. I think him as like the super late round, you know, like literally last pick in the draft is a fun as a fun play for sure. Especially if you have uh, Jamison Winston Kramer, you're on the clock. And uh, I almost want to want to hit hit. Uh, I'm just going to lock up my last stack. Give me Sam Darnold. I know I said I was going to be Deshaun Watson, but Darnold shouldn't still be out there. The, no defense. I have Robbie Anderson. It's a nice stack. Uh, so that's three three quarterbacks: Sean Stafford, Fields, and uh, Darnold. And I took Darnold before Daniel Jones. So I'm giving you that nugget so you can make fun of me. Who's the best? Uh, <laughs> Who's the best quarterback in New York? Well, um, Sam I know Darnold he's plays da- in Carolina. Sean. I know, I know he's down in Carolina, Ron. Just letting you know. There's only one quarterback that plays in New York, and he plays for the Buffalo Bills. Oh, gentlemen, go. oh Everyone yes, else is there New we Jersey go. Pretenders. Oh, here we go. New Jersey Pretenders. I like it. Oh, guys, prop swap. That's right. Sitting on my uh, Sixers to win the championship ticket I bought. It's not skyrocketing in value, but. Again, that's the great thing about prop swap. If I want to get out, I can just sell my Sixers ticket 
on the open market. But that's that's a great thing about Prop Swap. Truly an open marketplace where you can buy and sell sports betting tickets. Again, they're making it easy to profit these playoffs by trading in and out of teams as the postseason progresses. Every ticket purchase on Prop Swap can be resold at any time. And again, this isn't one of those things, oh, just if gambling's legal in your state. Uh, prop swap available in many states in the United States of America. Last week, someone got a uh, Montreal Canadian Stanley Cup future for $45 when the team was down 3 1 against the Leafs. A few days later, he flipped it for $600. Don't day trade stocks, day trade sports betting tickets. It's what you know about. Come on, you're a sharp better. Get in over a prop swap. And making the uh, making the value even better, use that promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. Propswap.com or download the Propswap app today. Use that promo code SGP and get up to five hundred dollars cold hard cash. Sweet sweet deposit bonus. I bet. I drafted uh, Traquan Smith. I was really Ooh, sour that that Adam stole Winston from me. So Traquan Smith Ooh, off the board. I was Kim. just looking at that. I was like, oh, like I got some Traquan Smith coming my way, and now I, nope. I've been drafting that motherfucker for the past. What is this? His fourth year, fifth year? It, this is it. He's got to do something. This is the uh, this is the time, right? Because he suits he suits the arm of Jameis better than Michael Thomas, perhaps. Yeah, Di- definitely, I, definitely. And, and you just had to pick oh, Adam. Great stack. Yeah. So Diami Brown right now down a little bit on the Washington depth chart, but I think he could sneak in here, especially in their four wide sets, just drafted him this year, dynamic playmaker out of North Carolina, you know, just in that pure big play, you know, boom bust, you know, I got plenty of guys who are going to be high floor. He just gives me that nice high ceiling. And by the way, we should, I got sniped. The guy I was going to take was Tevin Coleman. Uh, As we sit, what what, would six 16th round? Uh, Tevin Coleman running with the starters mm. in OTAs for what it's worth. It is June, but again, you can get a starting running back for a team that might not be all that good in the 15th, 16th round in this best ball. Show. I mean, Carter going rounds ahead of him. You, I you just, don't want anything to do with Tevin Coleman. Let no. me tell you right now, that's not, not what you want right now. Well, again, 16th round, maybe, maybe you, uh, you don't have any running backs. I mean, again, I like, I, I'm going to end up with Tevin Coleman. We're going to disagree on this, Adam. Uh, Tevin Coleman. I, gonna... I think. I think you'd rather have Ty Johnson. I think Ty Ooh. Johnson's more likely to see the field in that pass catching role. I think Tevin Coleman's just there because he knows the playbook yep. and helping onboard these young backs that they have in front of him. That matters. He is available. Do I draft him? Oh. You know what? Uh, I just. I, I, I just. Bernard? I just took KJ Hamler. I'm going to roll the dice here. Amari Rogers for the green Bay Packers. I think he could maybe be, maybe I'm even drafting him yeah. a little high here in round 17. Probably could have taken him later, but I, I think he could be a, uh, a fun little addition to the Packers offense. Again, assuming um, Aaron Rodgers decides to uh, play football this year. So a little bit of a risk and he's a rookie, but you know, this is round 17 feels like a good risk reward spot here. Adam, you're back on the clock. What are you looking to do? I need another tight end on this roster. I've only got one. And that's why I think I'm going to Hayden Hurst with the departure of Julio. I think that means Pitts and Hurst are going to be on the field together a ton. And I think that's going to mean Hurst is going to have some big games. He was consistently targeted last year and you just got to, you know, sometimes you just got to roll with it and keep a guy like that on the field. Yeah. And uh, coming back to my KJ Hamler pick, I mean, KJ Hamler, if you look at his game log, it's it's kind of all over the place, but he I correct me if I'm wrong. He had a couple of huge games uh, last year. I'm gonna bring it up, and it's it, he's the second year. I mean, certainly not a a dynamic uh, quarterback situation in in Denver, but he had. I mean, you remember that game? He had two uh, two catches for 86 yards, two touchdowns. Like just the fact that he flashed that a little bit his rookie year. I mean, it's not uncommon for someone to make a little jump here, rookie year to second year. And KJ Hamler, he's got the athleticism, he's got the speed. Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, also there. But you know, <laughs> I, I feel like the the Denver situation as far as uh, pass catchers is kind of up up in the air. 
May, I probably have too much shares of this Denver offense. Who's throwing them the ball? Yeah, that's <laughs> well, but I have Javante Williams, so one of those guys is going to get the ball. And Sean, while you were talking, yes, I took uh, probably my last running back uh, back up to Saquon Barkley. He's ranked way too low in these DraftKings uh, boards, especially if he's going to get some of the the three down work early in the season. And who knows, Sean? As you keep telling me, this injury is serious. It is. Um, it sounds a lot like just listening to the vibes of the beat reporters that he he he's going to have a role. Like they brought him in because he can play all three downs. And so uh, again, I'm uh, I'm I'm putting getting some stop gaps just in case. And then I get think the rest of the way out. I'm by I'm getting receivers. Maybe a tight end. Maybe a lot. Maybe I go two wide receivers, one more tight end. Mo Ali Cox got sniped for me. I like I like his upside this year with with Carson throwing him the ball. Right. Listen to what you've become. Uh, Christian Kirk finally went way way below ADP. His ADP is one sixty six. It's getting drafted two oh five. What? Do, why do you think the market, or at least our draft, is out on Christian Kirk, Adam? Uh, I think it's just the uncertainty with you know Larry Fitzgerald technically hasn't retired yet. He still can end up coming back. I think it's also the addition of AJ Green. There's a lot of mouths to feed in that Arizona offense. I could see Christian Kirk taking a step back, but he is still going to be a really nice boom bust candidate who I think you still need to be in on in a lot of formats. Oh, wow. Demarcus Robinson's still there. I'm going to grab him. Uh, I'm just grabbing. I'll probably grab him and then maybe I'll do some, uh, some stack hunting little, little double stack hunt. Oh yeah. Look out. Do we like Dan Arnold this year? He, he, uh, he might be a nice Sam Darnold double stack, the Darnold, the Darnold connection. Oh, and Adam, you're back on. What are you doing here? Back on uh, hold on here. I'm looking at a tight end and I got to think about who I'm going to go with. Adam likes to put a lot of thought into his tight ends. You know, I already I did. I, I already did. drafted Zach Ertz. That's okay. I, I scooped up Drew Sample, giving Drew me a stack Sample. there with Joe Burrow. Um, Interesting. You know, had some work there last year, about 50 targets, some red zone work. Just a guy, you know, I didn't get a top end tight end. So just three guys who hopefully they hit on different weeks and give me that high ceiling. Get that touchdown. Was, all of them could score. Yeah, all of them could score one of the touchdowns. And three of them gives me a nice spread there. You know how you are successful in fantasy football? You're ahead of ADP. Give mm. me Olamide Zacchaeus, receiver out of the Atlanta Falcons. Look at you. He was the guy, if you recall, he had a couple of big games filling in for Julio Jones. No Julio Jones. Sure, Kyle Pitts is going to take some of that target share, but, and, you know, they're going to roll coverage to Calvin Ridley. Enter. Ola Mide Zacchaeus. I, I I'm not buying the bump should not be going to Russell Gage, Ryan. The mm. non Julio bump should be going to my boy OZ. Yeah. Adam, do you co-sign that logic? I like the logic. I like the thought. Um I think it's I think a lot of those targets are gonna end up going to Kyle Pitts. I could see him in the ninety to a hundred target range. And then it's Zacchaeus or Gage, and it's you know, six to one and pick them on who you got there? Cornell Powell was just drafted uh, for the receivers. He's a, or sorry, for the Chiefs. He's a rookie receiver. He's getting some buzz. Yeah, I mean, and again, you could do worse than uh, you know taking shots on guys in the, in the Kansas City offense. I was actually going to throw um, use him in my my next like long shot here in round nineteen. Instead, I'm going to lock up the stack, which I probably don't need to draft him in the nineteen. I can probably let him. Slide to the twentieth, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Harrison Bryant, the uh, the tight end up from the Cleveland Browns. You remember again, he also had a couple a couple big games. Now he's not high on the depth chart. He's going to be behind Austin Hooper and possibly Njoku, but you know, into he played two games this year. He had three touchdowns. Like there's got to be something there. Twenty four catches, three touchdowns in two games. I think there's a chance Baker goes back to this guy. So give me a uh, Harrison Bryant in year two as a uh, dart throw. Am I crazy Kramer? No. I mean, we're, we're in the 19th round, Sean. Yeah. Josh yeah, Palmer no, that's, just that's went nice. They're late. Josh Palmer just went. He's an interesting uh, guy for the Chargers with Mike Williams injury issues. Keenan Allen, of course, a ton of injury issues. Him and Guyton, I think are, are, are good. Uh, you know, dart throws here late. Is Deshaun Jackson going to play this year? 
I mean, did he? I, <laughs> why not just take Tutu Atwell if you're gonna throw money away? I mean, no, they drafted yeah, Tutu I mean, Atwell in the second round. Gonna, he was like their first pick. I'm gonna throw money away with, uh, you know, as much as I throw like to take draft the, capital away. Mm, well, uh, as much as I like to see all the targets that key key QT, you know what? Should I should I just grab another? That's a great plan, actually. I now have Brandon Cooks and Kiki QT, who are going to be playing for a shit team. David Moore, Ryan, take David Moore. Uh, you know I like that one, but I have a. We haven't discussed it yet, but I have a special Carolina double stack for Sam Darnold. Mm. I've been t- too oh, in, too much David Moore in the last round lately. It, you you might want David Moore, but I, I think his replacement in Ooh. Seattle, Dwayne Eskridge, is actually yeah. who you want to be in on right now. That's a fun one too. And it's the, it's a great name. It's a strong, uh, strong lesbian name, Eskridge. <laughs> All right, uh, are we almost done? We are. I feel uh, like we're dragging a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we're wrapping it up here. Twentieth round, Ryan. That's just the edibles talking. Mar, m- me and Adam, energy <laughs> sky high. I mean, you you uh, I, captain I, I, edibles in the third round, letting little auto draft mistake. Wow, well, we, we that was that was that was not edibles. That was just you know a man who would you know. Running on fumes, I put down a uh, twenty-two ounce cowboy ribeye, a uh, number of cocktails, probably about four solid whiskeys, various whiskeys. Ryan, it was a pretty night. pretty awesome dinner. All right, so as much as I, you know, Don, uh, Parham Junior. Donald Parham Junior. is out mm. there, and I'm not going to take the former XFL superstar, but I am going to take, and, and I, I'm just going to assume he's not going to get taken before me. But uh, tight end out of Notre Dame on your Carolina Panthers, Tommy Tremble. Ooh. Complete dart throw. As much as I, we we all know, we we all love uh, Dan Arnold on this program. Big Dan Arnold fans. The way that his uh, hair was flowing behind that Arizona Cardinals <laughs> uh, helmet. But I, I, you know, they they drafted Tremble. He's a fun pick. I've seen some. Uh, he's getting some love. Maybe a hype guy. We'll see what he comes out. I know he was. You're going to tell me he was more of a blocker. All that other bullshit. I think they drafted him for a reason. That team's going to have a shit defense. And it's the uh, 20th round. So there there's my championship winning stack. When he has two touchdowns from Darnold week 17, when the Carolina Panthers are playing the, the Tampa Bay bucks and the Tampa Bay bucks have Ooh. rested all their starters. Ryan's Ryan's uh, no, actually 40 chess. I'm sorry. Him. At new Orleans is their week. Uh, week someone, seven. someone drafted Tyrod Taylor. Interesting. Interesting. For I them. mean, he's got to go. I mean, he's going to have some rushing games. He's going to put up some numbers. The question right now, gentlemen, do I go with the wide receiver or the tight end? I'm what? sitting on eight receivers, three tight ends. I've oh. got Keelan Cole and Donald Parham queued up. Come on on think, brand, bro. Take the t- You shouldn't take the tight end, but yeah. you should take the tight end here. Yeah. I got to take Parham. I got to take Parham. I just, Oh, I missed it. Didn't get it in time. I ended up with Keelan. Cole. I was going to okay. say, I, I, you don't need more than four tight end no. or three tight ends. Um, yeah, I think I, I like having Cole. Um, right now, he's down a little bit on the depth chart, but I think he's going to cr- climb up there. Um, I, I think he's somebody who's always been productive. He's had some big touchdown games. He has this nose for the end zone, and he gives you, you know, just some nice excitement and speed there in that Jets offense, who's probably going to be down a bunch and be going four wide a lot. So. And Sean, you yes. completed your Baker stack. That's exciting. I did. I I have a number of uh, Baker options. Not only Harrison Bryant, but Donovan Peoples Jones, and uh, and Rashard Higgins. So and, I'm just all in on this Browns offense. And if Aaron Rod- Aaron Rodgers, if you're listening, uh, just quick take the headphones out. Jordan Love has been drafted. <laughs> oh my God, that's pretty great. That is a. Uh, that is a last uh, resort here. All right, I'll rattle off my team: Patrick Mahomes, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Javante Williams, Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson, Devonta Smith, Travis Kelsey, James Connor in the flex right now. Kenyon Drake, Devonte Parker, Jalen Rager, Baker Mayfield, Chuba Hubbard, Zach Ertz, Rashard Higgins, KJ Hamler, Amari Rogers, Olamide, Zacchaeus. No. Harrison Bryant and Donovan Peoples Jones, Kramer Rattleoff. Who do you got at the QB one position? Mr. Matty Stafford, uh, followed by Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Jones, Aaron Robinson, the second Julio Jones, Cooper Cup, Ferkser, uh, double tight end or double Tennessee stack. Robbie Anderson, Tyler Boyd, Brandon Cooks, Gus Edwards, Justin Fields, Henderson Jr., Troutman, Sam Darnold, Traquan Smith. 
Devontae Booker uh, on my Giants. Not hoping for an injury. Just uh, just a late round pick. Demarcus Robinson, Kiki QT, and Tommy Tremble. That's an interesting team. This is a new. This is different, Sean. I haven't had one of these before. It's like some strange, you know. I'm excited about it. <laughs> this one has a chance, Adam. Adam, what do you got? Listen, I got Joe Burrow at quarterbacks. Joe Joe Stogie, loving that. DeAndre Swift, Josh Jacobs, De, uh, Devonte Adams, AJ Brown, Jamar Chase, Cole Komet, DJ Chark, uh, Trey Sermon, Melvin Gordon, Lavisca Chenault. Darnell Mooney, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Devin Singletary, Jameis Winston, uh, Deami Brown, Hayden Hurst, Drew Sample, Dwayne Askridge, and Keelan Cole, the Owensboro Flash himself. He's going to win me at least one week. Ooh. Guys. And uh, if anyone uh, from DraftKings is listening, can you guys whip up a draft board, please? Yeah, let's, let's get that up. going, DraftKings. Come on, Come guys. on, Gus. It's 2021. Ryan, maybe we should uh, whip up a uh, draft board for them because we're in the app game. That's right. Get that SGPN app available on the App Store or Google Play Store. You know, we don't we go both ways, Ryan. We're mm. available to both App uh, Store people yep. and Google Play Store people, and not only should you and anyone in between. Yeah, not only. We are uh, we are App Store fluid. Not only yeah. should you download the app to support the podcast, but really for a shot to win one thousand dollars in our NBA contest, download the app. Just hit the contest tab. Very easy to fill it out. All you got to do enter who you think is going to win the NBA Finals, how many games they're going to do it in, how many points are going to be scored in the NBA Finals. So you know, like fifteen hundred points if it's a six-game series, maybe Nets and six. Whatever how, you think. How much happen. does this cost to enter? Completely free. Okay, right? you, Completely expl- free. you explained it enough. That's oh that's plenty. God. Let's move on. Winner take all. There's no podium. There's no participation <laughs> trophy. There's no win play show. There's just win. No place. No show. You win one thousand no. dollars. Thank you, uh, DJ Nation. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Make sure you check out Adam Pelletier on Twitter at Adam Pelletier and all the uh, awesome uh, fantasy football content he's shepherding onto the site over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. I know you're talking uh, projection model. We already got that going. What else? What else can people expect here as they get excited for the fantasy football season, Adam? So as soon as we get the Titans and the Falcons fixed after they screwed everything up today, we're going to have that live this week. Also dropping this week. Dynasty trade value chart, June update. Lots of moves have happened, so we got an update there. And uh, early next week, we're looking at having our full rankings up from the entire fantasy staff as well. Big things happening, folks. Stay tuned. All your fantasy football needs right here. And DraftKings may not have a board, but boy, they tell us in 2,275 hours, 24 minutes, and 40 seconds, our next contest starts. That's what I'm talking about. I, I want to be right to that point in the future, Sean. Right there, two hundred twenty-seven, whatever, whatever he said. Oh yeah, I for, I, I'm going to tweet it out. But Ryan had a great quote from dinner saying, "Quote: I want to die on Mars." <laughs> yeah, doesn't get any well, better a, than that. After football, okay, after, the after football, football, season, football, after this football season, that's next level. I said I, I want to die in space, but if Mar- if no, Mar- you said Mars I want to die on Mars. Mars is part of space. That works. Okay. There you go. And uh, merch Monday coming up. So uh, get in those reviews and breaking news reviews of our app in the app mm. store. Or if you send me a screenshot of the Google Play Store, I'm not actually going to look that one up. But <laughs> if you guys review in the Google Play Store, those are also available for merch Monday. And because it's NBA playoffs and we're feeling extra generous, it's going to be a hoodie to a uh, winner rocking a review in the App Store, Google Play Store with the new SG. P and app for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. And he is Ryan. If you aren't already in slack sports gambling podcast.com slash slack, where I am a now heavily, heavily, ta- just heavily rewarded F one tout hitting another race winner, cashing a 16 to one Sean. If you were in the slack, you would have cashed it with me. Kramer, let it ride. Good time.